Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, we are moving into a new realm of diamond crosses with the bullet phenomenon. So these are blobs. I have a whole bunch of CKB, and now I have a tattoo, and I got enigmas coming in. Enigma was my first choice, uh, probably because it's um, it's history and it's kind of long. And I don't know use. <laughs> yes, it's long. I think it's like maybe like a, a year and a half or two years. Um, but anyway, I moved on to the tattoo. My first Enigma uh, crosses, they got contaminated. So I ended up, when I started doing the um, the crosses in a bag where I was putting uh, the blob Dikiran culture and then a mono in the same bag, I, um, my PC like kind of messed up one time and I ended up with a bunch of contaminated green. So I went back to those uh, original plates and redid the crosses. I think I actually might have did those on agar plates. And I don't know. I don't remember so many of these things. Anywho, long story short, this is uh, like some of y'all, if you've been watching the other videos, this is the blob. This is a tap blob. And this is uh, Natalensis monocarion. So um, it's a little bit surprising um, because, well, obviously Natalensis is quite a bit smaller. Um, tattoo uh, is a blob that comes with tat, and CKB is from Crocker Crinkle Brains. This is where all the lineages and things um, get kind of confusing, you guys. I'm starting to wonder, you know, people sometimes are like, oh, well, you know, we have all these collagens that have been inbred, and <laughs> I, I don't even know what to think. A lot of these, a lot of times when you do multi spore grows, you end up with things that look very similar to other collagens. Uh, you know, popping out, and then sometimes you get, you know, this is from a tat blob, and it, this looks a lot like the CK, say, CKB blob crosses that I did. I don't know, man. There's some kind of commonalities and some differences running through all of these different cultigens. I mean, they're obviously all the same species, um, so that's probably the commonality. Uh, there's probably a reason why we shouldn't be real, real critical about, you know, what makes these things different, um, because it seems like at the end of the day, it's kind of like dogs. Dogs are all the same species, and when you get, like here, you get like street dogs that kind of randomly mate with each other, and then they all sort of go back to this generic looking like dog type of phenotype. Like, it's kind of weird. You know, two or three generations before, they may have been these like, you know, weird exotic breeds that humans, you know, artificially selected for, and then you give it like a poodle or a lab or, or, you know, even like a smaller, like a terrier or something like that. Uh, you give these dogs a chance to breed with other types of dogs. Within a generation or two, they immediately go back to this sort of generic dog looking phenotype. I mean, this is the kind of thing where I'm seeing, you know, this is a tat blob. Tat, of course, has got its long, long history. Uh, and Natalensis, which uh, is is not is a cubensis, you guys. Um, that the whole thing's firing up again. But these are clearly so Natalensis, uh, which is was was some by considered a different species. I don't um, by some considered a different species is not. I've been saying this for a long time. It's not. It's just another cultigen. And that again is kind of illustrated here by the fact that it you know made quite well with a with a tat derivative. Um, so there's obviously spores there, and um, this looks like something you might find just kind of growing out in the field on a cow patty. So this is where you get back to that, that idea of like, well, what genes are hiding in there, and what's being expressed in this phenotype, and what are those spores down there that I'm about to get swabs from? Like, what do they contain? So then we go back to pheno hunting, and the same like traditional you know, plant breeding, you go back to doing pheno hunting and you select for certain things and then you try to, you know, stabilize that genetic line. And it all basically goes back to the same ideas um, that we've been using for, for you know, centuries, uh, millennia, um, you know, when it comes to some of our agricultural crops. It's the same idea here. Luckily for us, we can do it a lot faster with mushrooms, right? Like I can, I'm going to have you guys the, you know, the F2 fruit in about a month, month and a half probably. And then I'll move on to that three and that four, and maybe I'll do some selection in there. Well, um, you see, just uh, just real briefly, what I did is I, so as I said, I mixed the the diamond, uh, or this is a diamond mating, so I mixed the dicarin with a monocarin in a bag. You can see there, there's the blobs. 
So a lot of people are interested in the blobs. Um, I'm just kind of using them as a vehicle for some genetic diversity. Uh, and you can see down there, there's little fins and stuff. So anywho, you guys, this tub has pretty much served its purpose. I'm going to go make probably about 30 swabs from this. And uh, and uh, maybe uh, maybe some people out there will get them. I put them on the site. Uh, yeah. So there you go, you guys. Um, head off into my day. I hope you all have a good one. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.